think he was hard-headed. When it came to me giving, like, team talks and stuff, he would always be the one to remind people in-game, in like, about it. Hmm. But, anyways, I, and I just feel like that's sort of what Tony does in, in this team, because I always hear him, like, repeating points and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, so... Okay, so we're talking about, like, coming back from behind. And this is where, like, uh, what I was saying kind of comes into play. It's like, you know, uh, I have seen you guys as a team, um, you know, make plenty of comebacks. But it's not really through macro. It's not, like, these crazy rotational plays. It's a hands diff. It's not getting, like, tempo. Well, more than anything, it's usually just a team comp diff. It's just, like, we just draft a really good 5v5. It's literally Western style. It, it, it's literally just, uh, whoa. It's just get <laughs> get better 5v5, hit two to three items spike, depending on like what champions we're playing, and then just win 5v5. Like that's that's it. Like we just we just go 5v5 and just win because we death ball with, you know, Oriana and a hyper carry. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if it wins games, it wins games. But that's not displaying the type of macro skill we're talking about. Like you're not making a comeback because you're crazy chess players. Yeah. Um and so like, you kind of have to have people on the team, like you're saying, that can establish, that can talk, that can communicate. Like, uh, say you have a strong Jax. Everybody else is weak, but you have a strong Jax. Well, you're not going to go 5v5, right? Exactly. If, you a, if, you have a, if you have, like, an Orianna with a 6k gold lead, you're going to go 5v5. Yeah, that's one thing I if talk about. If you have Jax with a 6k gold lead, you're yeah. never going to go 5v5. Yeah, for sure. That's one so, thing I've, like, mm -hmm. kind of been stressing to Corey, because, like, Corey will have a lead in game, but, like, he'll sound exactly the way he does whenever he's behind. Like, he doesn't talk. And, like, I want Corey to be, like, a good example. Like, why I'm, like, trying to get him to watch more Niles is, like, Niles, like, whenever he's ahead or, like, whenever he's doing, you hear him on comms, he's, like, pulling all resources on the team towards him. And, like, he's getting yeah. advantages through it. So, it's, like, it kind of has to be like that or, like, what John does or, like, what I do. Uh, Ramsey hasn't really been playing carry jungles recently, but whenever he was on green and he did it, it'd be the same thing. Like, we, like... You give us the information that we need to play around you. Because, like, League is an information game, right? And if you don't tell us what you want to do... That's the main thing about being on comms. Is, like, you get to transfer information better. If you don't tell us what you want to do or, like, what you're looking for, it makes the game a lot harder to play. And that's, like, when I talk about yeah. going silent in comms, it's, like, the game's, like, impossible to play, right? Literally. Because yeah. cause now it's, like, we just removed our advantage. Like, enemy team's on comms and we're not. Because we're just not speaking. Yeah. And this is, like, another, you know, it's, you know, my style is really anecdotal. I like to draw comparisons and stuff. But whenever I, I don't know if you remember, but I coached a team. It was that Dark Pie Guys team. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I remember, yeah. It was, yeah. like, Kali, Prankaroo. Mm -hmm. We scrimmed them. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, I subbed, I mean, like, any team I coached, you know, we didn't really use subs. I just subbed for them. And whenever I would sub for them, it's the same thing as Western. Whether I uh, peaked in Challenger and like maintain like gm to master every season or not i shouldn't be outperforming like people like winston and scrim statistically right like it just shouldn't happen winston is a jungle main he's literally 1k lp jungle main mm -hmm. right but what do i have over him if he if he can hit 1k lp jungling and i i mean at my best if i'm like sweating you know i could maybe hit challenger but i'm not hitting 1k lp mm -hmm. i don't meta slave i don't play the game like that but it's because in a in a comp environment i have better communicational skills and i'm playing for the team like what's the best thing for the team right and i'm not going to dip back into like western that was too long ago but like even whenever i did that i was playing on prankaroo and Kelly's team i i specifically remember like the best example of winning from behind that i can think of we were probably down maybe 10 or 15 kills in this one game the first game I played with them, I played Elise and had Jace top, and the enemy uh, top laner was Nar. And everybody was getting raped, but I just camped top. I camped top and killed him over and over and over. And the enemy jungle, I don't remember who they were, but they were super meta jungler at the time, and they had a Mishai's. Uh, I don't know, random AP champion in the jungle. And they were 25 stacked out, and it didn't matter because Jace carried us from like an 8k gold deficit. Because what could they do against Jace? He ran over split push. He could he could one v two side lane. He could one v one side lane. If he grouped, he was one shotting people. Like it just didn't matter. And it was just establishing an early win con and then playing around that, right? And it's like you guys should be able to do the exact same thing every single game. Mm -hmm. um, just a second. Uh, and I don't really see you guys doing a lot of that because it's not like Jace is this crazy 5v5 champion, right? But mm -hmm. we had to figure out a way to play around it, and that's what we did. And so, uh, I mean, you guys have to learn like when to force, you know, when to when to fold, like 
what you're playing for in every game. Like a win condition has to be established, and you know I hate that word. I hate the word win condition because if you if you say win condition from like champ select, I think that is the most stupid, rigid thing people do. Whenever people are like, "Oh, Jinx is the win condition. Why are we camping top?" Like that's such a retarded thing to say. But to me, a, like there, I guess I guess it's almost better to say there's like loss conditions, right? Like in that last game you guys just now played. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I said going into it was, well, we can't have GP behind, right? Because if GP's behind, Olaf goes and runs him down. GP isn't our win condition, but having him behind is a huge loss condition. Um, so identifying, like, things that you need to make happen or not let them make happen are, like, the first things you need to do. And you have to, like, establish and stick to those game plans. Then you have, like, your contingency plans. Like, okay, maybe we picked a game where we have super strong team fight. Like, maybe we have Jax, Sejuani, um... I'm just always gonna say Oriana because she's like the like literal default mid laner. You know, yes. wave clear, poke, team fight. Pretty good one v one. Like she's good at everything. So we have that, and we have like Jinx. You know, whatever sport doesn't matter. That's our five v five comp. Jax can five v five. He out of all the bruisers, he's second best five v five bruiser in the game. <clears throat> that comes to mind, anyways, from like standard pool, uh, with Riven probably being the literal only better. But what happens if we start losing that game really hard? Our contingency is like jack split push, basically. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so anyways, it, it, we have to like establish like everything that can happen in a game before we just go into it and start running around like retards. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, hmm. I'm a top player. Yeah, you have no choice. Everybody else has to be a leash. Literally four, a four-man leash on you. Okay. But... But... <laughs> okay. But... That said, uh, how to draw what I'm saying back to your point is kind of tough because it's like it's not like I can give you some magical words of wisdom and suddenly everybody just gets it. Wait, what's my point? Uh, we need people to talk when behind. Oh, Nobody okay. talks to you. Um, now, and I'll, I'll also add to that. I'm gonna link it onto it because I think it's a criticism that I think can go with it. I think because you're generally the voice of the team. Whether you're ahead or behind, because everybody everybody's more vocal when winning, but you're still shot calling when everybody's winning. You know, like that's yes. just what you are on the team in general. Whenever your team starts losing, I can't say it's necessarily like this every game, but there are notably times or whenever you guys are losing where you are very mopey. In the yeah. second year, mopey. Yeah. I yeah. can't. I, I know what I, you're I don't talking know about. How it affects, Yes, I don't know how it affects everybody else, but like for me, I'm an emotional person. So if somebody else is like that on a team I'm playing on, I would feel miserable in Mopi. Yeah, it, it's it, just it yeah. No, there's no excuse and for it's that. It's not like a. It's not like a. It's not like a. You know, it's not just like a toxic thing. It's just frustrating. It's like, it, it's not like it's not like a toxic. It's not like it's not like I would feel like oh you hurt my feelings because you were mean. If if somebody just sounds depressed and sad, it's gonna make me feel. I'm I'm genuinely like, I'm because like okay so, it's it's more about like the situations that we're in in the game, like uh I think that Oriana game is a good example where it's like. I just kind of feel powerless in the game because, like, what I was saying, like, on a mage, but I'm still trying to be the one to speak and nobody's speaking to me. So it's like, I'm just kind of depressed. Sorry. Yeah, and nobody's speaking. So I'm just kind of depressed. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like that. But, but still, uh, it's like, either way, it's just something that. I mean, is non-conducive and should be fixed. At the same time, it's hard to control emotions. Obviously, I know that. Yeah, I'm an emotional um, player. Yeah. And it's a double-edged sword, right? Because if you're an emotional player and a game's going really well, it usually improves, you know, like, hyping yourself up improves. Um, yeah, I guess you. Um, yeah, that's something I have so, to work on, though. It's more like just a mental yeah. thing for me. Yeah. And I mean, it's not, again, it's not like a big deal. It's not a matter of toxicity. It's just a matter of, like, like Corey said, just morale. Because um, everybody loves you and wants you to be happy. Oh. Yeah, I just hate losing, uh, you know? Okay. You. Well, yeah, everybody would. Uh, Corey, what about you? What do you? What do you have to say for the same subject? Like, what's a glaring issue that you feel like either somebody else on the team has or something that affects you or, or whatever? Like, what, whether it's, again, lack of resources or you just, it's like consistently... You know, X, Y, or Z lane is coin flipping every game. Uh, 
He just plays top, man. He's just vibing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you have no, if you have no input, if you legitimately, if you legitimately have no input, that's fine too. No, like if and if I ever did, I, I would say that. Yeah. But yeah. I really don't. Okay. All right, John. Drop a paragraph. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <he knows. laughs> Actually, no. Ramsey goes first because it's top jungle, and I kind of went first just because. But Rams, Rams, do you have anything? The only thing I have to say is probably setting up a game plan. When I go into game, you already know I'm like the most lost motherfucker in here. Yeah. yeah. I got like no clue what's going on. So if we like set a game plan, I can kind of have an idea of what to do during the game. Oh, actually, that just made me think of something. Okay, so um, let me write that down for the notes. It, can be, it doesn't have to be like a big game plan. Yeah, but it like could it could be like what I do, right? Because like whenever I get into a game with Ramsey, especially if it's like a match or like I feel like we're playing versus like a good team. Where, like, mid lane's gonna be predictable. Like, the mid lane's gonna play out the matchup properly. And, like, I feel like I can mm -hmm. get whatever, you know? Like, a three way push, two way push, whatever it may be. Like, I'll communicate to Ramsey, like, hey, I'm gonna get a three way of crash here and then bounce back. You're gonna have a uh, product for Scuttle. Like, it doesn't have to be like, we're gonna dive level three and then we're gonna roam by level six and then we're gonna do this, then we're gonna do that, then we're gonna do this. Like, planning out the whole 20 minutes of the game. It's like, I'm planning out the game to like 245. And then after yeah. that, I'll plan out the game to like, five to 15 depending on my lane state right so like just giving ramsey like tidbits is like i think a pretty important thing like just letting him know what's going on it's like it makes his pathing better too yeah so so then yeah that's something again that's another like thing we've always talked about right and I, i've done that with literally everybody individual and team is establishing game plans and that there's more than one definition to that and uh, not just more than one definition there's more than like one way you should be doing it every game so like as a jungler Oh, like the main choices you're making are am I full clearing? Am I three camp ganking? Am I going for like X, Y, or Z scuttle? Am I trying to double scuttle? Blah, 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 blah. All this stuff matters. And obviously, that is completely contingent on like what, what the laners are doing. Well, maybe not completely. Um, also, jungle matchup. Like if you have such an overwhelming jungle matchup, laners barely come into effect. Eh, at the same time, if the laners have enough priority, you could have the best jungle matchup and it doesn't really matter, right? But generally speaking those are like our things we're thinking of like are you are you pathing for the 100 percent scuttle are you pathing because you have a laner that you obviously need to gank for like if you have a um i mean easiest to gank for laners like annie maokai people with point and click cc and decent damage if you have them in a lane where they're going to be shoved in it's pretty much a no-brainer right that's just you you path to that really fast Mm -hmm. um, if you have nothing, you know, if, if your laners are going to be under their turret, but it's not an easy gank, well, you just have to clear your jungle. Like, uh, you know, it, it's pretty simple thought processes, but that is contingent. Like Ken said, like laners have to feed the info. Um, if we have an example like last game where Ash Varus needs to push, like they, they have to push, but GP also can't be behind. That's where it gets a little bit like dicey on the decision making. Um, who are you leaning towards? Well, GP needs to not lose, but as long as GP doesn't grief early trades, there's no way he gets killed. He won't even get dove in that lane. Like it cannot happen. He cannot get dove in that lane. 100 percent, like 100 HP to zero. Whenever they're not running ignite or anything like that, unless he takes an early trade and misses, you know, those are 30 or 40 percent of the HP. So, like Ken said, you know, it's it, nobody's gonna give you their whole, um, like. Yeah, at 30 second playbook, right? Like what's going to happen at one minute, one thirty, two minutes, two thirty. That's that's not what matters. But like, if it's like, okay, in this lane, I want to go back on, you know, this gold, or in this lane, I'm going to have this lane shoved in, or I'll always have power for scuttle. We just get like basic info like that, which it might it might sound like a lot right now because it, you know, it is kind of a lot to take in early. But once you get like used to it, it's 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 it comes like uh, what's what's the word? Riding a it's bike. Like clockwork. Like once you have it. Like once you have it, it's gonna click every single time. Like it's super, super simple. It's just a matter of getting in the habit of, of planning this out every game. It's like, is there anything wrong with going for an invade? Like you coin flipped on Jarvan. Like most plays in league, I would say are never bad. But how much did we plan it out before we went for it? Like what was the communication? If if Syndra had 1,000% prio in that game and is able to right click out of mid lane as you are entering their jungle. Not like reactively once the fight's happening. If Syndra is moving from lane while Annie's under turret with two waves under turret, that's a completely different story, right? Because it's planned out in such a way that if Annie rotates, she she loses like 10 CS under turret mm -hmm. um, and we can just get out, that's fine. But the way it played out obviously was not fine. <clears throat> and that's going to take a whole different type of like... 
out of all these things that we're talking about right now, it's the easiest to do once you know it, but the hardest to learn, like, entry level, right? Mm -hmm. But once we know it, it'll, it'll be really free. Uh, but that's also what I'm sort of here with you, uh, for you guys, like, uh, in draft and whatnot, because I can sort of tell you your general game plan. It's just a matter of you guys in-game to fine-tune it. And that also leads to the next thing, and it's something we've talked about before, and I think you guys are already kind of working more on it. But, like, if a laner knows, like, if you are hitting the enemy turret, well, well, actually, let's back it up. If you're about to crash a huge wave, like, let's say, a, like, a two to two and a half stacked wave, right? It's, like, 12 to 15 minions. If you're going to crash that wave, you know that, without a doubt, there's literally nothing the enemy laner can do to stop it from bouncing back, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be stuck on the turret so long, there's going to be congestion. The whole wave's going to die. The next wave's going to get there. Your next wave's going to get there. And it's going to start pushing out from under their turret, and all your minions are going to die. And they're still going to have at least, like, four, you know, three or four minions left. That is whenever you guys communicate, okay, this is about to crash, and in like a minute, a minute and a half, you know, you need to be up here. Because if their jungle or if their laner is under turret, right, for like a full minute, how do they have a ward down? They don't. And what can they do about a lane slow pushing off their turret? Like mm -hmm. nothing. No mm -hmm. matter what. But anyways. Yeah, it's just gonna be information feeding, and that's that uh, out of everything here, like I said, it's gonna be the hardest to learn, but the easiest once you have it down. And now, lastly, it is John. John, what is what is your complaint or something you guys well, something you writing, think you guys need to improve? I'm writing down notes on a notepad. Let me just get my well, typing fingers ready. Well, no, no. no. <laughs> about the uh, pushing it and warding, right? That, that's what I was uh, talking to Tony about, like, where if he is playing <clears throat> something, say, like, something as deadly as Blitzkrieg, right? If you're sitting in a bush, what does the enemy have to do, right? They have to ward it. Yeah. Now, if, if they ward that one and... Tony swept it because he 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 put a ward down first and then for uh, that's what I told Tony like put a ward down in that that bu the bush closest to their tower so that way um it level one and level two it's not as aids for him because if they have like a Lulu or something they'll just poke him out and then he'll get chunked out and then Blitzkrieg can't do anything right so you have to yeah. avoid that by using the bush now if, if when he plays that ward and gets that sweeper and then comes back now when we're pushing up um. They're gonna put a ward in that first first bush. He's gonna sweep it. They're gonna put another ward. Now they don't have wards for a gank. Then we can set the because we we have uh, the full control of the wave. We can have it bounce back, and then they're dead because they don't have wards. Yeah. That that's just all, all I want to say about that. Um. Now for the for the things about Corey has been improving a lot, but I, I don't know if it's Corey keeps saying his 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 linear is doo doo, but I, I don't know if that's the case or not, but. At least, like, I could see an attempt of him. Because the only grab I had with him before was he would either, A, get a lead and completely throw it with the jungle gank. Because he's, like, his kryptonite is, is a jungle gank. Or um, he would just completely lose top lane. And then it would make it unplayable for me. Because, like, top lane champions are disgustingly broken. <coughs> yeah. True. And then, um, jungle, I don't think I really have a grab with. I don't lie. Oh, um, you don't? Oh, I have 30. Yeah, I right, let me go back again. Let me spin back. Yeah, because <laughs> I think Ramsey has been doing everything like perfectly. Not gonna lie, uh, in terms you think of just on been pretty good since because I mean yeah. a couple of weeks ago we were having pro troubles with like you know allocating resources and blah blah blah. So you, you yeah, true actually, he's been doing good. Well, well, even that, I don't I don't really care if he allocates resources top, even if he allocate resources. No, as long as it's allocated the right way though, like right but, timing and whatnot. But but in reality, it's not Ramsey's fault that. Right. Uh, he allocated everything top lane. That I don't care that he allocated everything top lane. But then it's Corey's job to not lose that lead. Right. So it's not really Ramsey's fault. If anything, Ramsey has been playing pretty much proper the entire time, besides his random invade invades. But um, yeah, that's my only grip. Invades. But that invades. usually only happens on the top side of the map, and and that's why I'm wondering why. Because in bot side of the map, it never happens. Because Ramsey always asks me or Tony, "Can can we gank bot lane? Do you have prior bot lane?" That's why we always have like perfect dragon control. We always have like. Uh, invade timers we always have like roam timers bottling because like he he asks us like you know is it okay to gank here do they have anything if not he just immediately backs off right it's because uh, well i think i know why i feel like whenever you um it's more like a numbers thing and like there's less room for error so like if you're gonna um invade let's say like he wants to invade top like last game right and olaf can't really move Jax can't really move so it's really only a mid 2v2 right since there's less champions and it's just like a 2v2, even if it's 1v2, there's like a lot more room for error when it comes to like getting that kill or like securing the blue just because you have less of an advantage, right? It's like a 1v3 versus like a 1v2. It's like way different. Yeah, right? So like the problem doesn't come with like the actual invade. It comes more with the execution. 
but you do know the throw that could happen in bot lane is even worse if all all three of us die, right? Well, or obviously, four. I'm saying though, the throw is a lot less likely to happen bot lane though. Like all that have, needs to happen for the throw is a missed EQ on J4 or a missed QE on Syndra. And all of a yeah. sudden, it completely flips on the head. But like, I'm pretty sure you guys would have to whip absolutely everything. The ADC would not have to auto, and Rams would have to just sit still to lose a 1v3 in like, you know, the enemy jungle, you know what I mean? Well, you'd be surprised because we could actually lose depending on how they play it out. If they stall long enough for their ball to come and it's a 3v3 losing matchup, we just completely lose. Well, exactly, so right? That's what I'm saying. Room for error. Yeah. There's there's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, less room for error that. for the yeah. mid 2v2 then, and top then the, 2v2. Then the question is, uh, do you take it? I mean, that's why Leto said um, you yeah. have to be absolutely sure, right? It's like one of those things. Mm -hmm. You have to be absolutely sure that you're going to be able to, like, 100 0. Like, you're going to be able to get the kill. Because, I mean, it's never happened before. Because me and Ramsey have, like, pretty good synergy and stuff like that. And Ramsey doesn't, like, you know, fuck up mechanics because he's a pretty good mechanical player. But it was just, like, an unfortunate time where his first EQ got canceled by Sedge. And then his next EQ got, um, just didn't reach. So it was, like, we just missed out on a load of damage. So it's, like, that room for error popping up, right? So, you know, it's just a fucked up invade all of a sudden. Because of two missed abilities. So yeah, I mean, it just has to be more, I don't know if calculated is the word, but I don't know if thought out is the word either, but like, I guess more meticulous, because like, the invade wasn't like really a planned out thing, it was just kind of like, oh, I have mid prior, Ramsey's on a timer, we can invade, which I don't think it's like a bad thing to call it like, uh, by ear like that. Yeah. It's, but okay, at the same it's, time, it's kind of hard to say, right? Because it, we don't want to just randomly do stuff off script, and it turns out bad. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to pass up good opportunities. Yeah, you also so don't want to be an autopilot robot team. I hate that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't want to pass up the good opportunities. It, 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 this is definitely like a, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But it's like I was saying. Um, I, I don't even remember what the words I used were for it. But it's like unless you can do it yourself, 100 to zero, like no questions asked. If it's not that condition, then it does need to be completely scripted and thought out, right? Like, we don't just randomly go for it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 that's where, like, it comes down to, like, the knowing exactly what all four champions involved can do. Is Syndra 100% going to have the clearance to do this? Is Jarvan going to have the clearance to do this? Like, uh, the thing I said earlier about, like, having, you know, Annie under turret with, like, waves. You know, if Annie is frapped with 10 minions under turret and you can get in and leave safely either one like which, whichever you end up having to do in the end cool because no matter what it's win-win either annie leaves the the stuff and loses xp and you guys get out and it's fine or you guys just kill the the annie stays under turret and you either kill such or just take her jungle from her you know but it was so iffy so coin flippy <clears throat> and remember another thing too is like i and this is like not 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 exactly related, but it still comes to mind because it's like this is probably the number one thing I had to say at Western. If if you say but it worked out, that's not that doesn't mean a play is good. That never means a play is good. If your like argument is like oh well this was bad to go for but it worked huh like you know I guess you're wrong blah, blah. no like but something worked out isn't great. Even if that play had worked out, that still wasn't the play to go for because it was so like sloppy and unorganized, right? Um, too many little things went wrong. There's too much of a, a, a room for error. It's like, I don't want to discourage you guys from making plays, because like Ken said, you don't want to be a robot team. We don't want to play like on a cookie cutter setting where it's like everything is super predictable and comes down to like numbers and calculation. Yeah, just taking the fun yeah. out of the league. Yeah, well, it, it, it's taking the fun out of it, and it's also just worse. Like, yeah. nothing should ever come down to just calculations. Um, I mean, because then you're just predictable, right? Mm -hmm. So. Right, like like the like the SL game where where I took um honestly it was like a it was like a eighty eighty percent chance of failing and then like a twenty percent chance of uh, of actually succeeding. But it was the twenty percent chance was literally all based off my mechanics and it completely utterly failed because I didn't you know, react in time or whatever for the, the various Q and then it ended up with various getting two kills, which is absolutely bad for the lane and for the team in general. And then th yeah. that's what lost us the game. But uh, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, I can see, I can see what you guys are talking about. Um, like if plays, but the the way I see it is, I I always see like these like weird small windows that probably nobody else sees, 
And if we're not on the same page, it usually goes wrong, which is why I, I'm trying to like take less plays if I don't know if you guys can follow up with the play. Does that make sense? I don't, I don't really, especially I what you're saying. Yeah, because <clears throat> like I can see like potential kill kill windows, but if you don't have the reaction time, you don't have the mechanics to do it, then it's not gonna work out. Like, have you gonna... have you ever seen? Okay, there's a. It sounds really dumb, but there's a really relevant meme to this. Have you ever seen like the IQ curve meme where it's like on the, like all the way to the left like with 15 iq it's like go in burr ha 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 and then like in the middle it's like no calculate this perfectly and like all the way to the right it's like just go in burr yeah. i think whenever we were like um like first playing um like uh, the very first bl5 that we had in the qualifier it was like go in burr on 15 iq but um like as we got better it's starting to become like more towards the middle but i think it should get to a point where it's like we we're right, just going cool. yeah go in burr but it's for the right reasons now you know what i mean it's it's like na aggression on the left lck snooze fest in the middle and, then and lpl, LPL. yes right. exactly 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 just like that so i think that should be our ultimate goal is to like play free but like you know have some merit behind yeah. it i mean it's like mechanics aside because, I mean, obviously it's not like, you know, uh, Tony or, uh, or like Archie are going to have like my mechanics, but like John knows from laning with me, just in normals and like flex or whatever we've played. And again, there's going to be skill disparity. Enemy team's not going to be as good, blah, blah, blah. But, but you know, like my, my way of playing support, no matter whether I'm playing Lulu or Nami or Thresh or Nautilus, right? I'm always hyper aggressive in lane. Yep. And it always works because you're hyper aggressive with me, right. and I, I didn't get that from playing with prototype because I've always been that way. But that's a really good example. Whenever I do it with him, we get first blood at level one or two almost every single game, and I only play Lulu when I play with them. Exactly, and it's because I'm abusing her autos, and <clears throat> other people should do the same. Like in that in that game, you guys are playing Caitlyn Lux. I was saying ulti whenever they use Lulu shield. Right. But they have no reason to use shield because Lux wasn't using abilities. You guys had a big wave pushing to you. So you can't just walk at them in auto attack, but Lux can always just move up and press E. Right. And, and had she done that, it, it would have forced, and you know, and that's, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's like, it's on the support to know, but then you probably have to just say something. You have to say, hey, just move up, poke, like move use abilities, like do, you know, do something, punish him for going for CS, because if, if they move up to CS and she E's and they shield, then you ulti. And then either way, Kog'Maw's missing 200 HP, whether they shield uh, one ability or the other. Um, but it's like, like, you know, constantly looking for aggression and stuff like that is important. Yeah, now, the thing with Prototype is he... That Spectrum, probably. You know, he's he's very caveman. Prototype is... I mean, I won't do it with him anymore. We have a 38% win rate in, like, 70 games. <laughs> um, he's just stupid. Early season Cory levels. So, so he's... He, here's kind yeah. of... You. I don't know why I didn't want to, to walk up and throw E, like, willy-nilly all the time. Mm -hmm. What mana issues, because... Spelts got nerfed, and he reminded me that during game. Yeah. Second, I don't trust any. I was about to say, yeah. Of Q, if 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 he throws out his E and Kogma walks up with his W, and then Heartseed misses his down, we either have to flash away because we don't have anything to himself, but he will have to flash away, and then that will make us more vulnerable to gang. That's why sometimes I prefer like. Like, I was playing this solo queue game the other time, and this Blitzcrank would just, like, I, w I, w I was playing Draven, and I was just, I was just autoing them and, like, um, triggering the uh, tower aggro, but then not getting hit by the tower. And then I was just poking them under tower, but then Blitzcrank would just literally stand right into the tower menacingly without throwing Q. Like, he would yeah. just not do that. And this, like, like, perfect example of, like, like, um, uh, what's it called? Like, I mean, times where it's good for him to AFK. Yeah, yeah, no, well, it, it, it doesn't allow them to walk up ever. But it's applying yeah, pressure. I mean. And missed it, we would probably be dead. Yeah, the third yeah, of the ability I mean. is it's bigger like, than the actual ability. Of the AFK in that instance, like, he yeah. actually did it right. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, just... Yeah, I agree. A, yeah. Um, and now, but I will say, though, in that instance, it's like, yeah, okay. On the one hand, you don't want them to, like, miss, and then you, they just walk at you. But on the other hand, it's like, well, then we just shouldn't... Like, we, we can't have, like, a situation where we just don't use stuff, you know what I mean? Right, right. Um... And also, it's because the wave was pushing in. Like, you guys are already kiting back to turret, so I think it's more okay to look for stuff uh, in general. Mm -hmm. But e either way, 
it's like it, it's just it's it's a communication thing people will always come up with play style let me think of this like saying i heard the other day um oh i think it was actually dopa and it's like love dopa there's no such thing as a play style <laughs> you're either good or you're bad i just, i feel like i've said you're, that before you're either making the right play or the wrong play. Yeah, you don't have aggressive laners. You don't have passive laners. You don't have this. You don't have that. You're either making the right play or the wrong play based on the situation. Bro, just quoted and... my DM to him. That's crazy. Sorry. Uh, maybe. But, <laughs> but it's like, I mean, I'm sure you can understand like what it's saying. It's like if you're playing Caitlyn and they're playing, uh, I don't know, well, Caitlyn with whatever. Well, it, it, we'll, we'll just not even factor the sports. Let's just ignore that, because it's just for the sake of the example. You're playing Caitlyn, and they're playing Vayne. If Vayne hits level 6, and you guys are both on Noon Quiver, she's probably going to win an all-in against you. Yep. So your job as Caitlyn is to permanently abuse her outside of her ulti timers, and maintain such a lead that even if she has her ulti, she can't fight you. Or, and so also keep her low HP because Caitlyn's outrange is crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Both. Oh. You, you want to have her so you want to have an item advantage so good that even if she ulties and all ends you, you know, she can't win. But also you just also have her poke down to where she never even thinks about it. Yes, that's exactly it. So it's like the right play in that lane 100 percent of the time is to perma poke her. Every time she moves up to CS, she's hit with one auto. And, and like what people don't understand when it comes to like these range advantages. It's not as simple as you out range so you auto when you're out of range of them. Like there's like a there's like okay the other day, holy fuck, who was this NAR player in LCK? It was one of the craziest micro examples of skill that I think I've seen in like years. In LPL, like in front of my own eyes, LCK. LCK, <clears throat> probably Zeus. And it was a NAR that was targeted by some champion. I don't remember what the champion was. I, I don't remember specifically enough like that, but they were targeted by like, you know, I think it was the game that, that Peanut played Poppy, I think. And it may not seem crazy to the average viewer, <clears throat> but what he did was, Poppy was like in range of E and Nar was just outside of his turret range. And he like wiggled back and forth multiple times was this this year just within her e range and then leapt away like eat away to the turret and and however it played out the the champion that like dashed him again i think it was poppy and not 100 sure 100 sure ended up dashing into the turret and taking like two turret shots because of it and like it's such a small thing that like it, it doesn't seem that impressive to most people but to me the presence of mind to think about that is pretty sick and so with caitlin it's like the same thing it's not as simple as you right click main and get in one auto and run away the, the idea with Caitlyn in any matchup is you want to have, like, the, the, the understanding of, like, attack ranges to the point that you right-click them and you step forward once and their immediate reaction is going to be, well, I got hit, I, I need to trade back or else I lose the trade. But then you take a step back on your attack uh, auto-attack timer and then the second they start turning away, you step back in and hit them again. You do that two or three times and suddenly they're missing, you know, 150 HP. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty in lane is a lot. That's that's a that's like a fourth, a fifth of somebody's HP. I'm pretty good at, at auto spacing. I can I can auto space people with the same auto attack range as me, which is why I, I do really well with Vayne. But um, yeah, uh, what's it called? Uh, the the problem comes when when like there's you can't just like just look at ADC as a role. Sure, I can auto space perfectly, whatever. But it won't change the fact that if my support is sitting behind me. And two right. people attacking me, two people auto attacking is way more than one person auto attacking. Well, of course, and that's why I said for the for the example we we're doing AD carry versus AD carry in a vacuum, but a lot more does come into play. Um, a, a ton more comes into play, and again, that's why whenever me and you play, it's not a matter of like, uh, I, you know, I'm hit, I'm not hitting the craziest thresh cues, I'm not hitting uh, the craziest, I don't know, karma mantra cue. My karma mantra cue doesn't do 50 more damage than anybody else's. It's just understanding those little things. That bot lane is a dance. Every lane's a dance, but bot lane's a dance between four people, so it takes a lot more coordination. You know, we're not playing Alasar Tristana versus like Lucian uh, Brom lane, right? It's not. It's not all in on both sides, right? Right now, and it hasn't been for two or three years. And I would argue that while AD carry is broken right now, I think bot lane in the last, the, this season and last, has taken more skill, more technical skill than it has in almost any season just because it's not kill lanes. And you could say that sounds counterintuitive, like how much harder is it to play, you know, Enchanter plus Hyper Carry than like all in lane. But it's like that argument is stupid because whenever it's an all in lane, it's usually just whoever has more damage. 
Like, it, it's a lot more technical right now. It may not be as, as, it doesn't feel as skill expressive because you're not playing somebody with a ton of agency, but that's exactly what makes it more skill expressive. Because, like, you have to figure out how to win a farm lane, which is, you know, usually pretty hard. Um, anyways, not to get, like, too nitty gritty on this one roll or whatever, but there's just a lot um, of, of little things like that that just have to be worked on over time, I guess. Whether it's, again, because it, it's not a matter of, like, what play style somebody has. Um, there's just the right and the wrong, and we need to figure out, you know, how to adjust to that. Hmm. We got 20 minutes before I uh, match. We should probably transition into talking about draft. <clears throat> yeah. Anything okay. I missed on uh, 